settle down with the breath, and see how long you can stay here. If the mind wanders off, you know what to do, bring it back. You've got to keep watch over things and try to notice when the mind is about to wander off. There will be little signs. And if you catch the signs in time, then you can breathe in a way or focus in a way that prevents the mind from going. You've got to learn how to look for the subtle things in the mind. Because it's the little things that can cause a lot of trouble. It's like a fire. You can have a little tiny spark and then it can burn thousands of acres if you're not careful. Or like a little tiny snake. Even little tiny snakes can have a lot of poison. So these little movements of the mind, these are the ones that grow into big things. You want to be careful. You can't be heedless about them and say, well, that's just the background noise in the mind. That's the way it's always been. Well, the, things, the way things always have been is that we're creating suffering for ourselves. We're turning a blind eye to the reasons why we're suffering. When the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths, he said, suffering doesn't come from outside. It comes from inside. It comes from little movements of the mind. A little bit of craving can get started, and then it can snowball into something really big. And then the, the suffering that comes along with it is really big. So look for the little things. Keep your eyes open. Even though we sit with our eyes closed, we want our mental eyes to be open as much as possible. And try not to blink inside, because it's in the space of a blink that the mind can do all kinds of things. As the Buddha once said, there's no, there's no analogy for how quickly the mind can change. Even the blink of an eye would be too, too long. The mind can turn around and go in a totally opposite direction very, very quickly. So watch for those little movements, because those are the ones that are going to make the difference. <laughs>